Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys here from Your Guitar. Actually, not in Nashville today. We're in Memphis for the first time, having a rig rundown. Might recognize recognize this beautiful face, Ian, from the 2012 rig rundown, as you guessed it, with Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. Ian, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Nice I'm to see you. so glad that you're still employed. So I mean, employed with Red so Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still surviving on tour. Yeah, just about. Yeah, holding it together, I think. And it seems like you still have a lot of babies to take care of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, there, there's there's always additions to the pile, but this is what we have at the moment. Yeah. So we've done tea, we've hung out. Let's uh, let's actually get down to business let's and talk about earn my guitars. paycheck here. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Number one. Okay, let's start with what the two he plays the most. We have a pair of sunburst strats. Uh, this is called Dash, short for Dashiel, which is Chad's most recent addition to his family, and he arrived the same week as Josh bought this, so he named it after Chad's son. Um, it's a lot less responsibility with a guitar than a son. Yeah, it I is. Think. It is, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I haven't got any kids. Me either. <laughs> I've got musicians instead. Um, so it's a 1960 uh, Sunburst Strat. Um, got, it, got it at Chicago Music Exchange. You'll notice it's got Sunburst on the back of the neck. It was some kind of, I guess, show guitar for Nam. Huh. And I guess it was probably just on a stand and rotating, and they thought, might as well put Sunburst on the back of the neck. Why not? One of a kind, apparently. Is there anything that you know that you guys have done since it's been in your care? I try and do as little to them as possible because, you know, there's a reason why they spend vast amounts of money on old guitars, you <laughs> yeah. know. If it doesn't work, I'll fix it, but otherwise I leave it be, you know. Gotcha. Um, actually, I tell, tell a lie, actually. I did dremel out the back of the cav cavity a little bit because it didn't fit properly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I sort of jimmied that together. It drops but. the value. Oh, well, it's no, no use if you can't play it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right. What songs are that, uh, is that used on? Uh, obviously, we see a bevy of strats um, here. Yeah, I mean, genuinely, uh, the, the two guitars will just default to through the majority of the set. Okay. Unless it's a specifically a non-strat song are these two. Um, th and then this one is called uh, Chick, named after Chick Hearns, the baseball announcer. Is that right? Yeah. Um, this, is a this is a 59, uh, worn in, scratched a for Jesus, as you can see, uh, the band-aid's there because he punched a hole in the pick guard. Well, but, well, we're going to explain the full story. Well, sorry, no, he dropped his pick and was playing a particular riff that necessitated a fist. Uh, and he, Which riff was? Oh, it was the kind of the sweet leaf riff at yeah. the end of uh, Give It Away. Um, moment of creative stress. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he sort of punched the pick up through the pick guard a little bit. So I put a band-aid on it because it's because it's two and a half grand for a new pick guard, <laughs> and even he was just like, I'm not paying that. And so, uh, the yeah. band-aid stays. The band-aid's fine, yeah. Uh, and if, if it gets too nasty, I'll put a new one on it. Do you know if, like, you know, the tone heads that are going to want to know about this stuff, is that, yeah. do you know if it's a band-aid or if it's a generic? Uh, it was a, a real properly branded band-aid, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we know that. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't skimp on like, these little <laughs> yeah, details. I'm glad. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you guys do have something like 17 semis, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I one, guess one's there's just one of those for band-aids. One's just full of band-aids, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Um, you were, might remember this from the previous one. This is the 74 hardtail that we got in Sweden called Gus after King Gustav of Sweden. Has a really, really skinny neck. Um, Which Fender, is unusual for that. Yeah, Fender confirmed that it never should have left the factory because it wouldn't have passed QC. Really? Yeah. yeah, we took it to Corona and Jason Smith, the master builder, um, measured it, looked at it through his special glasses and went, yep, this shouldn't have left the factory. But Josh loves it. It's As I say, crazy he loves skinny. It. Yeah, I mean, feel how skinny it is. Yeah, wow, yeah, that's that's <laughs> almost like a shredder, like you, uh, Jackson absolutely. or something. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we actually have um, we have a few kind of modern built custom shop ones, uh, sort of stand-ins and extras that all have a recreation of that neck on them. So, wow. like this one here, for example, this one's called Monty, after uh, Uncle Monty in the film With Nail and I, featuring Richard E. Grant. I don't know if anybody knows that one. Uh, you go watch it; it's a funny movie. Um, I'll take your word for it. This gets played on Go Robot. Okay. Track off the new album. I don't know why. It just does. It's a new guitar, yeah. so why not a new song? Yeah, exactly. It's a pink guitar kind of song. Um, what else we got? Uh, this is a new guy, again, with the skinny neck. Oop, that one's, Sorry about that. Well, it's just, that's just a relic. Yeah. That's a relic well, it. look at the state of it. <laughs> <laughs> they did that to it already before I got my hands on it, honest. Um, yeah, um, this guy is... Hey, Tracy. Um, this guy's particularly for any really fiddly songs that require a shorter strap. Oh, all right. <laughs> you can see it's a bit higher because uh, you can't play things like snow with the guitar right right now. No, ankles. really so, um, intricate parts. Yeah, right. So um, yeah, that's just got a default guitar for anything really picky. 
And from what you know in his playing style, uh, people probably want to know if you can give any insight with the strat, with the five-way position. Is he all over or is he always uh, in the bridge? No, 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 we're all three positioned. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, he really just doesn't have time for out-of-phase sounds. Yeah. It's, it's just um, grab it and go. So all five are still wired, he just uses Oh, no, no, it's, it's just a three-position switch. Oh, okay. Yeah, even even the, the modern built ones, you specified it with gotcha. a three-position switch. So. Um, yeah, it would make my life easier because I don't have to remember which one I have to position it. I don't want to give it too much. There you go. <laughs> and uh, is there anything special with the pickups? Like, I, I, obviously, the old ones are originals, uh, but at the custom shops, you know are they what? just vintage actually, the, specs, maybe? The, uh, the custom shop ones are actually the last, I think, one of the last batches of pickups that were wound by uh, Abigail. Uh, is it Abby? Uh, oh, no, is it fine? Oh, no, you have to cut this. I back. just know the only one um, I know is MJ from Seymour Duncan. Yeah, no, it, uh, she uh, did. Abby's the, the little lady who was basically winding pickups since. Oh, right wow. Back. We actually took the old 59 along and had it opened up, and her pencil signature is on the back of the same pickups from the same way as they are here. Wow. And she had just retired, or was just about to retire, when, uh, when we got these guitars made. So, yeah, they're some of the Special last ones. Pickups, yeah. I believe maybe that they have a few batches left under you know, lock and key at Fender because she just makes great They're just great waiting pickups. for you to get your own guitar. Pretty much, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> no, I have one already. <laughs> oh, sorry, I yeah, thought to talk to you about this. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, you probably this is this a special before. one, yeah. Yeah, this was, uh, this was John's backup telly, which he uh, gifted to Josh. Um, 67 telly custom. Amazing piece, love it. Uh, he plays this on Parallel Universe. All right. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just and you mentioned solid before, as you like, like any telly, you can batter it, it won't complain. The tape was on it before when John had it, just because, yeah. not so much, just because it wasn't contoured like the straps. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the thing, is it was probably just a bit jarring on so the old, especially, you know, energetic player. Yeah. You know, he's going to back Yeah, yeah. Bit. Yeah, so yeah, just a little bit of padding there. And I suppose I could take it off, but again, it just hasn't occurred to me to do so. No. <laughs> uh, let me see what else we got here. Um, what have we got to, uh, oh, we've got a, uh, 74 Starcaster. Come here, you. Come here. All right. This is in E flat for one particular song on the new album uh, called Encore, uh, which they haven't really got around to playing just yet. Um, so it's been sitting there, feeling a bit lonely. Just looking. Yeah. Looking pretty. Yeah, exactly. But it'll come out at some point when they do that song. And um, yeah, I think he may have been enamoured of this because he's a big Radiohead fan. Ah. Uh, so I'll put him in that direction. Yep. But yeah, smash in peace. And uh, you mentioned so far the other ones have names. Has this one been uh, christened yet? Uh, it hasn't, no. It hasn't really come into play that much. So its character has not emerged. <laughs> gotcha. Just yet. When, when, when it's played, we'll know what it's called. It'll yeah. speak to him. Yeah, exactly. Something will come to him in a dream out of a burning bush. All right, this is the good, interesting part where we start okay. uh, diving into some oddballs. Yeah, some of the oddities. Here we go. This is a Fender Custom Shop creation. Um, and you said Fender because that thing just screams Gretsch, obviously, yeah. beside the T-style. It says Fender here, <laughs> but it says Gretsch in here. Hmm. Who's to know? Who's to <laughs> follow that trail of clues. Um, yeah, we spotted, when we went to Corona to get the tour and go and hang out with Fender guys one day, we saw one of these on the wall in uh, one of the master builders' little kind of cubicles. And just as we're like, what's that? <laughs> I want one. And so um, they call it the white chicken as Ooh. opposed to the white penguin. Yeah. Uh, we call it uh, a pollo. Oh. Uh, again, stupid story. Um, he, just after Prince died, he was standing in a queue in a store, or standing in line in a store, and uh, the girl in the queue ahead of him said, hey, did you hear this? There's gonna be a tribute concert to, to uh, Prince uh, at the Apoyo. <laughs> and he's like, really? The, the live at the Apoyo? Yeah, right. right. So this, so this is now the Apoyo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect, because yeah, it actually not? doubles as a Spanish yeah, well, Apoyo. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. So, uh, Chicken. So yeah, uh, entirely hollow bodied. Uh, no center block or anything. Uh, TV Jones uh, put songs in there. Uh, it sounds amazing. It just sounds so great. And you said this took the place of the last one we did, it had the penguin. Yeah, we, we had a pretty much uh, a standard issue modern white penguin, yeah. which I'd put TV Jones into. Uh, and it was okay, but it, you know, he never loved it. You know, But this thing, he just, when it showed up, it took like a year to build. Wow. So we were waiting on it a while. As you can, I don't know if you can see the beautiful arch. And you back said it's on it. just yeah, one piece carved yeah, out. Yeah, so top and back, top and the back are all just carved out of one piece. And for people that can't tell, obviously it's going around your neck pretty easily, but it's oh, it just weighs it's, nothing. Yeah, it's like less yeah. than four pounds. Yeah, I think we think the the actual wireless pack yeah. is weighs. That's more. probably the heaviest part that's hanging on me right now. <laughs> 
So yeah, beautiful. Really nice piece of kit. Um, so yeah, so maybe, uh, maybe we'll get maybe to see what it sounds like later. When does the Poyo come out? Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, for the same songs that he would have played the Penguin on. So that's for Californication and uh, Other Side. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah, smashing piece of kit and stays in tune really well, considering the hammering it gets. Uh, so yeah, pleased with that. Bringing that to mind as you pick up the next oddball, yeah. well, what does Josh prefer in terms of a setup? Does he like low action? Uh, no, he likes quite a high action, actually. Oh, so he yeah. can hammer it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, he's like tall, lanky guy, big hands, yeah. which is weird why he likes skinny necks. You'd have thought he'd like a fat neck, but yeah. then he, he just engulfs the neck with his hands. <laughs> and, uh, and he likes a high action, uh, 10 to 46 on most of the guitars. That's got 11 to 49s on it. Okay. Just because it works better with the Bigsby like that. Um, and I think I've got 11s on the Firebird here as well. Come here if we show you this last time. It's a beaut. And again, I can't remember what year this was. I think maybe 65. But yeah, Firebird 7. I'm sure someone in the comment section I'm will sure tell you. I'm sure they will. <laughs> People on the internet are very well informed. And very nice. <laughs> They're lovely. They're lovely. They really are. I see lots of people said really nice things on that, on that last one. You must have not I was read amazed. all of them. I was amazed. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they could be horrible to me and they said nice things. Uh, yeah, no, again, Smashing Piece of Kit, this one, he plays this on She's Only 18. And does this one have a name? Other than bird. Firebird? Yeah, Bird. Just Bird. Like Charlie Parker Bird. I yeah. Uh, yeah, Smashing Piece of Kit, that. And then its counterpart, if I can get it back in here without smashing the headstock, is... Ta -da. Again, I, th I think you may have seen this last time. This is a 12 string Firebird. And this is, again, this is in uh, E flat and is specifically for breaking the girl. Yeah. Um, poor thing, it's suffering quite badly with a shrunken pit guard syndrome, that one. But yeah, sounds fantastic. We used to have a Coronado 12 string, which didn't really cut it. To yeah. Us, but they, they did break the girl the other night for the first time in a really long time, and this just sounded immense. So yeah, great piece of kit, that. And I think that concludes the guitars, unless... I think, uh, I think is that everything? Yeah, I think we've got I'm them I'm sure Josh has a oh. few of them with him right now, but oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll have several on him. Uh, we've got them tucked away in all kinds of little corners and stuff, but this is what we're using in the show. Yeah. I mean, this is the glamorous part. Now we're going to get to see where you make your money, and that's between the amps and the pedals oh, and no. shit. So let's move on to that. Okay. All right, Ian. Got done with the guitars. Now yeah. it gets to serious business. Oh, yeah. And that's how we wire this all to sound. All the heavy stuff. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's not as complicated as it looks. Uh, we have four channels of wireless, so I've spread out across the guitars. Uh, I use the radial as a signal management. So you've got four channels of guitars, just select the one you want to can to him. Uh, this unit has a local loop and then an SGI loop. So the local loop contains everything that's in the rack. Gotcha. And then the SGI is a balanced line which goes right out to pedal board 55 feet away. Which we'll and back see in, in with bit. no signal loss and no extra noise. So um, the, the first thing that, uh, that you hear signal encounters is a tone bender and a clone that we have here using the gig rig loopy two. So even though these are within the rack, this, these two loops are actually actuated by a couple of switches out on the pedal board. Yeah. So. He has a ground controller for that. Uh, no, that, this is something separate. We have the, the ground control con oh, controls, okay. the two GCXs, but the first thing in the whole signal chain is these two. Um, let's say gig rig are great. Love them. And these two vintage pieces, or not vintage, but these two highly coveted pieces yeah. are new to the rig since the last uh, one. Yeah, absolutely. There's always stuff arriving. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we call this the prestige garage because it's really expensive and it looks a bit like two cars poking out And of, you were telling us the garage. That that's why that, this yeah, drill yeah, doesn't come out. That's right. It doesn't pull out that one. It just sits there because <laughs> hopefully nobody will nick anything. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and then coming out of this, guys, then we have two GCXs worth of pedals uh, on drawers here, normal kind of deal. Um, you can see we've got a Spectrum, we've got a JHS Firefly, we've got a Tumnus, a little um, compressor in there, a B9. This is uh, the MS20 Brain Freeze, which is basically like the, t the tone sweep, or the filter circuit rather, of a Korg MS20 synth. Oh, okay. Um, and that, that's actually operated by an expression pedal, which is out on the board. Uh, when does that filter. get brought into the um, mix? He uses it, it's kind of like an alternative wire, really. It's, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll show you later on, you'll hear the difference between, it has it either side of the, the mic stand, he's got a, a wire, and then this filter thing. It's just, mm. it's two different flavors, really. One I his bass stack, which is kind of fun. Um, and then more stuff in here. We've got, we got a Memory Boy, we've got an old CE2, P PS3, a Dispatch Master from Earthquaker, Memory Man, Holy Grail, and then this is the Misty Cave, 
which he uses as a very, very, very thin, slicey delay. You can, oh, almost right. imperceptible. Um, so basically what happens is that on the new record, there's a lot of switching of effects, which even he couldn't tap dance his way around. So basically what happened was during the last tour, he was explaining something to a wedge with his foot and his foot got broken. Oh. So he couldn't use his right hand board anymore. So I got all his effects and put them in a rack and I was triggering a few things, stuff that was coming up the same every song, a part of the arrangement. Um, so this introduced the idea of the press one button and several things happens at once. So yeah. was like, oh, this is good. So, so that's kind of been implemented now alongside a normal pedal board. You'll so see that up there. slowly bringing him into the 20th century. Yeah, bit by bit, I think, <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, so as I say, so after all these guys then, big old Loom takes out to the, uh, the pedal board, just you'll recognize his pedals at his feet, comes back again, and then this splits to Mar Marshall Fender and an ISO cabinet, which is actually this feed here. So we've got JMP1, we take emulated left or right out the back for the in-ears. We also feed to a power amp, which then feeds a 112 in here, and then that's got a mic on it, so that's a nice... So he does uh, use in-ears, or just the he rest of the band? No, no, he doesn't. He, he's not on ears. He I was going to ask yeah. why, because I've noticed when they play yeah, live that... Yeah. Absolutely, and, and as you imagine, it's the big old smooth stage, Chad's a very loud drummer, there's a lot of bleed everywhere, so anything we can do to try and isolate for the sake of the ears, we do. Gotcha. And so somehow between the, the, the ISO cab and the emulated outs from the JMP1, they get a nice mix for the ears. Why does he per personally prefer not to go with the ears? He just doesn't like things in his ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, he's, a, he's an over-the-ear headphone guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's good and loud up there, so it's not like he's not going to hear himself. No, yeah. yeah. It's good and loud. Anyway, so, okay, so it's combined Marshall and Fender rig. We backed away from the three-amp setup we had last time. We've gone for that, the classic Marshall and Fender combo. And the silver tone's gone. Gone. <laughs> On the heap. <laughs> um, so uh, so we, we start with the majors. So we've got, this is main and then backup major. Main and backup uh, Fender Tone Masters. 200 watt, 100 watt. Uh, I use these radial boxes. Uh, it's a two head split of thing. So if a, a head goes down, you just straight to the other head on backup. That's kind of handy, same with this guy. So we've got a nice bit of redundancy going on there. As you can see, there's pedals stuffed yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I was going to say, take note of this guy, as yeah. you've got pedals just kind of lurking. Yeah. Got to make the most of any storage you can get. Your and hands is on. there? Uh, so I'm assuming the top two. Yeah, sorry. This is this is main. This is main. Back up, back up. Okay. Uh, and then these feed by another loom out to the cabs on stage. And where I, it all comes out in the big noisy shout. I believe the last time we hung out, we had a red major. And yes. So now we have the purple, or is that the red up on stage? Uh, no, the the red is actually we have A and B rigs now. Okay. And and red red major is the main head in the B rig. Understand. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah, we've, funnily enough, we've got 12 majors now, I believe. And if, it, and if info is to be believed, there was 1,200 made. I guess we own 1% of all the majors ever made. <laughs> or rather, we don't, he does. Um, yeah, so we have, we have backups. This has been great, I see, super solid. We haven't and really had to um, you know, go to a backup at any point. But You know, we've yeah. done a lot of these, over 300, and this might be one of the few rigs where we've encountered majors. What's Josh's... I guess preference what, that versus any of the other. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's part of what he kind of inherited. It was part of the sound of the band. I mean, uh, John used a major and a silver jubilee, mm -hmm. um, and obviously he didn't want to just come in and use somebody else's rig. Yeah. But th for the audio guys, the, the major was a big part of the sound. It's got so much low end thump. Yeah. You know um, the way the guitar sits around the bass in this band. Um, it's a very particular kind of uh, relationship. Yeah. So you don't want to just have it all thin and spidery to sit on top of the bass, but at the same time, it's hard to get that thump in there otherwise. And the combination of these two, the, the Fender has this really lovely bell-like clarity to it, and then this just has this great kick, the, in, the, kick in the small of the back. Because you know? with the trifecta, you had the silver tone with the mid, right? Yeah. And then the major was the bass and on low end, and then the Fender that you had was the super... Uh, um, we had Super Reverb, and uh, Super that, 6, I think Yeah, it was. Super yeah. 6, and that was what you described as like the top. Yeah, the spark. It, it, it was one approach to it, and then we particularly found that with the amount of gain he was smashing into the front of the silver tone, they just couldn't handle it. Yeah. You know, the other two amps were going to find that it would, just, it would just become unpleasant. So we were like, you know, you, you need to go home. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it to the big boys. Um, but again, like, you know, we're, we're, the whole constant sort of uh, evolution of the whole thing, we're getting away from so much gain up on the pedal board. Um, he's really simplifying it. I mean, yeah. I'll talk you through this in a bit, but yeah, we're, we're actually just pulling back, pulling back, getting rid of things and getting back to a much more straight ahead sound. So and and I, I think it's, it, it's benefiting the sound enormously, to be honest. So. And you had mentioned before that you were a big fan of, you watched the ACDC rig run down oh, yeah. and you saw that where they, they were crushing through amps. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. tubes are just going like that. Are yeah. you guys having to do 
I know you don't have an amp tech, but are you guys having to oh, do well, anything well, with... Well, we do, actually. We have the wonderful Carl over here. He's an oh, amazing amp tech. Oh, really? I'm really lucky, yeah. <laughs> but is, he's not just sitting there changing tubes? No, 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 he's our monitor, uh, monitor, monitor engineer technician gotcha. as well. But he's also a very talented... Uh, so the amp amp's pretty much they, They're handled? good. They're, yeah, they're, they're fine. I, I mean, the headroom afforded to a player by a 200 watt Marshall is yeah. pretty considerable. I mean, we don't even have to pummel it that hard. I mean, we're only running at about the two channels at about three, I think. And yeah, you'll see that it's it's plenty loud enough, you know. <laughs> um, same with the same with the, the fender. I mean, that's only on that's in there on two, and it's yeah, like, you wouldn't gosh. want it to be any louder, really. So yeah, I mean, as I say, I'll, I'll I'll play it for you in a bit, and you'll see how loud it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. It's good. Uh, cool. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Should we move up, uh, up yeah. on stage? Sure. Let's do it. All right, Ian. Before we dive into the pedal mania up here on stage, <laughs> talk okay. us through uh, what we see here. Okay, so we've got the cabinets which are being fed by the amps off stage. Um, the heads on top, not exactly dummies, but uh, there's quite a lot of stuff going on behind here that just looks a bit rough if you don't have a head sitting yeah. on top. So, for the sake of my own aesthetic, I decided to put heads up here. Um, but and they're real, because these you know, are like 80 pounds. They're, they're very heavy, yeah, exactly. I jump <laughs> around every day. But, but the, the cabinets themselves are actually being fed by the heads off stage. Um, got your same tone master and the Marshall here. Marshall takes 75 watt creamback Celestians. And the Fender has Vintage 30s by Celestian, which I just outfitted. Thank you, Celestian. Um, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much the, that's the way it goes over here. Um, we've got a bit of an angle going on, so it doesn't murder the singer too badly. Um, and is there a reason why this one's double mic'd and that one's only got the single? Again, it's, it's just down to the way the, guy, the audio guys sound. like to gotcha. find the sound. Um, I guess they, oh, is it, we had a, Ro I think that's a Royer. I know we've been through a few mics. There was a few that just couldn't handle the volume. Like a couple of ribbon mics that just Slung. sputtered and died. Yeah. Um, but uh, but no, the, whatever it is we're using now it seems to be holding up fine. At least uh, for today. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what they. <laughs> so but that's not whatever, your job. Whatever. It's a microphone. Uh, yeah. Set and so, forget it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So uh, nice little. It's much neater and tidier over here now. I'm much very pleased with this. And uh, of course, then we have the lovely Chris. Where are you, Chris? Wave. Hey, so, there's Chris. And the lovely Chris lives just behind here. I like Chris. But, with his world of keys. And what can I do to convince you to make some no noise for okay, us? Okay, let me, let, me, let me see how this is going to work for you. All right. My kind friend Ian is strapped on a strat of, which one is this one again? Uh, this is De Shield. Okay. The 1960. All right, excellent. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, walk us through here, I guess, uh, what we got at okay. Josh's feet. Yeah, so like I said, the, the first part of the chain is a bunch of uh, GCXs which basically it's just uh, scenes for the songs from the new album. Okay. Um, just makes it a lot easier for him to concentrate on all the things he's doing mm -hmm. if he's not having to tap dance. Uh, but we also have a bunch of pedals which you can access. We've got the Tumnus for a little drive, a little, a little lift there, uh, the Spectrum for a bit of cut, a little kind of sharp, the Firefly by JHS if he wants to be really fuzzy. Uh, a little compressor in there, the Freeze, this is the MS20 uh, mm. circuit which is kind of a nice little filter so like that. Like a filter, yeah. Uh, and then just familiar thing. Normal kind of stuff. And then as I say, you can just kick up any number of presets. One song per bank kind of thing. What's uh, number one there? Uh, now me just turn everything off. <laughs> so if he gets himself in a pickle, he can just revert <laughs> to nothing. Um, and then, uh, so then I say, um, just the main pedal board is here. We've got the old WH10 uh, Ibanez Wah. Has a very particular why uh, does, sound to it. Why um, does he like that versus, you know, a standard crybaby cry or like a um, box? It's, it's very light and very easy to articulate. Okay. It really, I mean, it's re they're really flimsy. They break a lot. So we've still got stacks of them. I'm constantly kind of pirating one into another to try and make them. And he really enjoys uh, that sweep because the depth is turned all the way up to 10. Absolutely. And also uh, these have a, the, the pot has a sort of S-shaped curve to it. So it's a very particular kind of dip mm -hmm. as you uh, articulate it. So, yeah, and it's, again, it's what was always used in this band. So. He's trying to stay true to the sound of yeah, the Y in this band, yeah. Um, as I say, uh, right at the beginning of the chain, we've got the Klon and the uh, Tone Bender, which are triggered from these two little Let's pedals hear. here. So that's and the uh, Tone Master. Man, that's gnarly. And the best, nice, isn't it? Best way possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
You pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> um, we've got a, a Death by Audio Interstellar for just a good chunky overdrive. Good old DS2 for wheel and bonus. And then just various other pretty straight ahead modulations. We've got a nice chorus. Uh, the EP1, EP3 is in there just for an overall uh, lift like that. And then with certain guitars, you can turn that off. Uh, the, the Gretsch Fender thing, there's a lot of low into it, so it doesn't yeah. need that in there. It's just a way of equaling out the tone a little bit from so what one does guitar he do to another. With the, I know we covered this part in the last one, but in case they haven't seen that, what, what's the difference between the DD6 and the DD3 uh, in terms the, of the, his setup? The DD6 is just kind of a nice holding cascade, so... And then this is a kind of glitchy... Ah! One of those. Uh, and then further on we have uh, just a, a little spring from the Grail. And then a massive, great cavern on the RV5. Yeah. Which... In, which in the, I'm assuming the Grail is... Because there's a grail in the rack, and the only reason yeah. that is because so you can combine it with the pe absolutely okay. where, where the pedals are mirrored in the in the rack. They're generally the same settings, um, but they were just used w within the context of that certain song, and it just means he's not having to tap dance like mad. The, the the kind of the scenarios presented by the pedals in the new songs are a lot more kind of one thing than another than maybe in some of the other songs. That, so. You are uh, a 12 ounce scientist. I will coin 12 you 12 ounce because you use grommets. <laughs> Or I guess in oh, this yeah. case, uh, versus Gorsuch. I've seen him, uh, uh, Straplax, uh, Nels Klein, and numerous other people yeah. use it, but you, I've never seen him on pedals. Yeah, well, I, and I stole that idea from um, whoever was looking after Eagles of Death Metal. Oh, um, all right. Yeah, I, I saw their bass player had them wedged under his volume knob, and I was like, I'm nicking that. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's a great idea, and it's, it's cool because you can move it if you absolutely have to, but it's really hard to move it accidentally. So, understand. Cool piece Got it. That. Um, we've just got a single delete, uh, single repeat on the memory man. Uh, a short repeat, like a little slap on the DM2. Uh, unlatched vibrato. Oh, only as long as your foot's on it. Ah. And then just a real glitchy little fella here. So almost like random, like a bit commander of, yeah, of sorts. Exactly. Yeah, he, he likes his bit crunching. Uh, oh, and sorry, over here. Again, we've got this line six thing, which is for very specific songs. There's the wobbling Danny California. It's kind of uh, velocity sensitive. And then uh, from Throw Away Television. And More then I, I occasionally just dial things up on the other buttons just to throw him off, <laughs> uh, like this one. Um, yeah, I just don't tell him, and I just wait for him to put it on and see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, and sorry. And again, there's one particular song where there's, he uses the an enormous reverb, but also the hold function in the cathedral, so he can play a part and then play over it. Um, again, it's not a song they're doing right now. That spot is often used for other pedals to be swapped in and gotcha. out, depending on if there's one particular song uh, that uses an effect that he doesn't use on anything else. I'll just swap in for that set, swap it back out again. And my small Midwestern brain cannot handle this if we already covered it, but are all these pedals hitting both amps or is one getting yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So there's, there, there's no stereo, there's gotcha. no fancy stuff like that. It's just. Uh, just everything piles through both amps, Under. like Billio. God. <laughs> and, <laughs> and are any of these pedals on? Like I know a lot of times uh, typical players might use the Klon almost always on. Is there any pedals that are kind of just always on? Yeah, the EP stays on okay. all the time, actually. Um, one of the things we do find with the, uh, with the Major is because it's such a big, rorty amp that it's really unpleasant for everybody if you get it loud enough to drive it that hard. So we can have a more reasonable volume but still get a little bit of push out of it because there's so much headroom with a 200 watt amp, you know. So yeah. it's just, it, it's pragmatic, most of it. <laughs> it's just getting around things. <laughs> um, what I will say is also, uh, in comparison with that, I don't know if anybody remembers, on the last uh, board, we had a big white box with these switches. Yeah. This is a slimmed down version of the same thing by uh, the guy, uh, James Murphy at Bright Onion Pedals. And these are just switching sockets. So the whole thing's, uh, each pedal has a, a pair of sockets. Mm. And if I just whip those out, that pedal's bypassed, it just goes on to the next thing. And again, you've got a bypass, so if you have any problems, you can just bypass all these pedals. And notice the, the glow-in-the-dark tape, too. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's, there's a lot going on up here. Uh, there's a lot of hair and eyes and sweat, yeah. and a lot of whirling around and running around like a greyhound. And there's a lot of flashing lights and stuff, and people being excited. So, uh, yeah, it's quite distracting, I imagine. I don't, 
I can't play like a chord with the I just got dizzy just thinking about all yeah, that. Yeah, I know. It makes me feel quite unwell. I have to look in the other direction. <laughs> and you covered strings when we were talking guitars. Yeah. Just to round this up, uh, guitar picks. What's you prefer? Orange. Dunlops? <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, Which I believe we, are 60s. That's correct, yeah. Uh, so you know, pretty thin. You know what I have? I have uh, special picks made up so I can give them to people who ask me for them, but he doesn't use them. He thinks it's naff. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so he just uses plain old picks because he thinks it's silly to pick. So, uh, yeah, so I give them to people and then they're happy. But I always, I so always tell them that he doesn't use them. It's like, so it's when you just gave a me souvenir that, pick, okay? You, know? you gave me that stack of picks back in 2012, I thought I was... I, I didn't know then that he was going to react like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ian... It has been Good. far too long since I've seen you. I appreciate everything no, you've done. Good to see you, man. <laughs> we got to go hang out yes. with Tracy. Absolutely. Cover yes, fleece gear. Yeah. We'll be on the other side of the stage. Give him hell, Tracy. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're on the other side of the stage here with Tracy, as you recognize from the 2012 edition rig rundown with uh, Chili Peppers. Tracy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Like I told Ian, doing? I'm doing very well. Thank All you for right, asking. Good. I was, yeah. uh, like I said to Ian, I'm very glad that you're still employed and employed by the Chili Peppers. It's a great job. It's, I love it. It's rad. I love being here. I love the people I work with. And you get to work for one of the coolest bassists that's ever played. <laughs> what can you My say? My opinion. Troll them if you want. What can I say? <laughs> well, we're here to talk about basses, and I'm sure a lot of people will be familiar to what we see, but there'll be some new twists here as we go through them all as we get into the fenders here, but start off with uh, what's, what's Let's, Flea bringing out probably number one? This is the number one bass right here. And this is yep, a very the beautiful ones, right? Fender custom shop made by Jason Smith. All right. And um, it's got the single humbucking pickup. It's got a lane pour pickup in it, and these are great. Are those the ones that were, I remember the 2012, you said that those were discontinued? Are they yes, started making them? Yes, they started making them again. They're because, called okay. lane, the Legacy Lane Pour now. Okay. And one of the employees at the shop has picked up business and has great. got it back up and running again, which I'm very happy about. I bet. They're great sounding pickups. And Fantastic. those are, for people that aren't hip to lamp or they're those are active? They active. are active pickups, okay. yes. Uh -huh. And talk to us about controls and settings for anyone that didn't watch the 2012 one. Um, what we've got here is the Aguilar OBP1 preamp okay. in here, which has got boost only EQ. So this is bass and this is treble. We get the setting, we tape it up, we just leave it where it's at, uh -huh. dial the sound in, and he just uses the volume knob. So it's all pretty simple. Gotcha. It's got an 18 volt system, so there are two 9 volt batteries in there okay. in series. And um, that's about it for the electronics. It's pretty straightforward Is and simple. This similar to the ones that people can buy off the rack that uh, I know that he came out the signature jazz bass last. Very different. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. are some of the things that maybe are different on this that maybe aren't on this? This uh, has 22 frets. Okay. So that, that's one of the big differences right there. He likes having that extra, extra fret, fret on gotcha. there. He got used to that with the modulus bases yeah. before this. So we had Fender start doing it. And this and one is great. graphite reinforced It's also? got a graphite reinforcement in there. It keeps the necks nice and straight. Enables me to get the action down super low yeah. the way he likes it. People were asking, like some guy specifically asked, I can't remember the guy's name in the Facebook post that we put up this morning, but he wanted to know the, the action at the 12th fret specifically based on what, how Flea's playing style. Usually run about 4 64ths okay. on the bass side, graduating down to maybe a heavy 3 64ths. Okay. On the treble side. Perfect. And it, it varies. Sometimes he's feeling a little stronger and yeah. wants it up higher, and other times he wants it down lower. So it's. It's, but that's basically in the ballpark of what we do. Cool. And to yeah. go back to the controls here, is each one kind of the same? Like he kind of hears what he likes and then he's like, okay, let's tape it there? Or is it the I same? pretty much set it up for him and oh, okay. get it dialed in and, and he trusts me on that one. And if he smiles, you know so, you did a good job. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And, well, let's dive into the next one. Is this uh, brought out for any special one, like songs or anything before you put it away? Or is this, this just This is his main bass that he pretty much plays throughout the whole set. Oh, okay. And if it doesn't go out of tune, he'll play it all the way down until uh, an alternate tune song right comes up. Killer ja so. Jocko strap yeah, there? Yeah, he loves his Jocko strap. Perfect. Yeah. And then here is the Laker bass. Ooh, we're in grizzly country here, folks. He asked for, yeah. um, I said, Fender's gonna make you another bass. What color would you like? And he goes, purple. And he goes, um, purple and yellow. Um, Laker purple. Um, <laughs> Laker's logo. So <laughs> There it is. We just, yeah. We um, got the official colors from the Lakers. So they got all the colors right. And um, they did this beautiful uh, decal yeah. right here and covered it in clear coat. And, um, and rather than putting on the whole base, I like how they use the contour to the edges there. Yes, they, they sent us smooth. Um, 
proofs of a bunch of different ideas of, of things they could do with the different Laker logos, and mm -hmm. I showed them all to the band, and this is the one that Flea chose. And I, I think they did a great job. I really like the way it's offset. And this one has, I don't know if the other one, but I imagine it does too, is has the, the Fender. This has the Fender version of a of badass, badass bridge. so did it's Leo pretty Kwan. much the same thing. Sounds and feels great. This has the same electronics. And, um, and don't be fooled, just because he's a tech, I saw him up there just ripping on Suck My Kiss, so he can play. He can play, <laughs> folks. I can fake it through a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive into but, yeah. some of the modulus ones you got. Okay, right here we have... This was his last main bass on the last tour. And this is the flat black with the Flea Lakers yeah. uh, inlay Laker on here. This is a great bass. Um, basically has a, one of the older lane pours in it. Badass bridge. It's got the same um, Aguilar preamp and controls in here. So yeah. Is, and is uh, that like anything like textured on the neck or is that just for it's graphite. all graphite? Yeah, these I are all graphite necks on the, all these modulus bases and wooden bodies. And they stay in tune great. They're fantastic bases. Do I you can't know say what, enough good things about modulus. Uh, what wood is on the actual body? Is it alder or ash? Or? These are alder bodies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, really and, nice. Super fast playing. And, and do they come out at any point during the set, or again, is these just kind of backups? They're kind of backups at this point. Yeah, we're trying to switch completely over to Fender right now. And the, the Fender basses took us a while to get because they're custom built. Yeah. So um, one at a time. <laughs> and so now I have four of them. And is he still running the GSA, GHS GH boomers? GH stress boomers, yep. Mm -hmm. Great and strings. I don't know if it was the last time, but I noticed in the package that he's, I was surprised to see that he's playing round wounds. I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but. Yeah, that's always been, yeah. always been round wounds. Killer. Mm -hmm. And what's, uh, is there anything else that's new? Besides the one I know that we got today, we'll, we'll look Here at that last. There's another modulus base that they just sent us out recently. And this one has a rosewood neck. Ooh. And that's the only difference. It still has the graphite neck. Mm -hmm. And um, everything's the same. Pickups, electronics, but rosewood fingerboard. So it gives it a softer feel, a little bit woodier yeah. feel to it. It's a really nice bass also. And then this one here. Oh, yeah. The Aborigine bass. I remember that now, one. This one's special. So they sent this one down to Australia and had an Aborigine artist do the painting on this. So this is real, the oh, real yeah, deal. It's, in the back too there. it's all legit. And wow. um, with about 10 pounds of clear coat on it, this is a heavy <laughs> base. It weighs so much, and it's all that clear coat that's over this. But another great one that got used a lot on the last two tours. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um. What else? This is the new one. Yeah, let's check out. I know it's in your workstation here, but this let's check a, out this one. A brand new one here that Fender just sent us out. Did that literally, and yeah, it just came in today, you said. Just came in today, so I'm still setting it up. I have two of them, actually, that are identical. And he has a third one like this that he took to the hotel after the gig, <laughs> the last show. So, yeah, very heavily relict, all the same electronics. This one has a badass on it. And is this one based on his, I know that obviously he has the, the 60s bass. I know, it's has... a nod towards that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So we actually did try to play his 61 for a while. He tried using that a couple tours ago. And, you know, it, it's a great bass, but it just it wasn't for Chili Peppers. And yeah. he's recorded the last two records with it, so he loves that bass. But Probably doesn't want to take it out too but much But it just anymore. doesn't, it, he can't play as quickly on it and get around on it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have the cutting tone that these active basses have. But... Cool. And the other one that's on your workstation still is the same. It's I the assume. same one, yeah. Just yeah. a little more heavily relict. Which I'm sure is great for a guitar tech like yourself and Ian that you guys can we have can these relic around a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oops. oh no, no, that was there. That was there. <laughs> yes. But same deal. And um, one of these actually is gonna go to Josh Klinghoffer. Oh, so all right. I made one for him as well. But as soon as I get them all set up and played in and um, dialed in on the, on the stage and I'll figure out which one Josh is going to get and which one Flea is going to get. And they may choose for me. So Yeah, and they might know. even swap yeah. afterwards. But, well, it looks like yes. we've got bases covered mm -hmm. and obviously Flea doesn't use a pick very often, if at all. So He uses pick on maybe four songs. Oh, okay, and is there a particular pick he does use? Just the regular Dunlop Tortex uh, 60s, the orange oh, ones. Oh, all right, so pretty thin. Yeah, yeah. Dang. Well, mm -hmm. um, right behind us, very familiar again with the Galen Krugers. Yes. Stack of these. 
Is there anything different or that you guys have swapped in new models or anything? Are these still the same for the Still 40 the 2001 RB yes, that right. we've been using for quite a while now. They're great amps, they're so solid. They sound great, I never have problems with them. And are these pedals in the rack, are those? These are spares, oh, I have okay. it set up here so if anything were to happen with the pedal board, gotcha. I can dial them in and do his effects from the side of the stage if I need to. And Perry's gonna do an awesome editing trick right now and throw up some pet, a picture of the pedal board which is very familiar from the last one I time we hung out. Yes. But I noticed this time you guys have a Boss EQ pedal. Yes. And what's the uh, reason behind that? That one just takes all the high end off. That's okay. kind of his dubby reggae sounding pedal. Gotcha. So he uses it on Dreams of a Samurai. Uh, and that just kind of gives it a real dubby reggae So that's sound the only time it. it's kicked on. It's not during the whole set. No, it's just no, that. Okay. Just for when, when he wants to get that, that dub reggae sound. And then I noticed on the real pedal board, or the, the, the stage one, you have it the MXR uh, microamp taped at noon. Is that just for the boost? That's just for boost, gotcha. uh -huh. when he wants to do slappy things mm -hmm. or a solo. It also works well when he uses it together with the envelope filter to give it a little extra something something, because kicking in the envelope filter tends yeah. to drop out a lot of low end. And do you know why he chooses to go with uh, the actual Qtron from Electro Harmonics over the Mutron? That's the best sounding one. Gotcha. I've, I've been using that one for so many years now and I get every time a new filter comes out I try them and I AB them and, yeah. and we, I keep going back to the Qtron. That's and, all you can do is it. try it. Yeah. And all the others sound great too but it might just be for Flea and his setup but that's what works for us really well. Perfect. Yeah. Well I appreciate you uh, taking the time Tracy to go over the gear because it's pretty simple. Jazz um, and Modulus, The only Galen, other and change I've made recently is adding the JX44 which I use for an effects send and return. Oh, okay. So I can go low impedance out to my pedals. So I can run up to 100 meters if I want to with no wow. signal loss. And that's great. And it also has a nice little bypass switch on there. So if anything goes wrong with the pedals, I can hit that. And You kind of used that before. Yes. <laughs> you guys are troubleshooting. <laughs> yes, that's a great tool. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Tracy, appreciate and it. Hopefully, Absolutely. Hopefully this yes. won't be four years until we hang out again and talk mm, about gear. Let's do it again soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Things might not change that much in, the, but, in that time, but... But you never know. <laughs> you never know what'll happen. Might slip know. in a P-Base in there once in a while. Who knows? Could happen. This is Chris Keys with Tracy and Ian somewhere. There's Ian behind the camera. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Premier Guitar Rig Run down here in Memphis, not Nashville. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.